Hey everybody, and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today we're going to be watching Flash Gordon, a special request from one of my subscribers. Flash Gordon is a movie I remember watching as a kid in the 80s. I remember obviously Ming the Merciless, Flash Gordon, the princess daughter who is quite good looking, and the Hawkmen. But that's pretty much all I remember about the story. I do know Flash Gordon is obviously from a 1930s, I think, or 40s TV series. I remember it being repeated on early morning Saturday TV when I was a kid. But that, to be honest, is pretty much the extent of my knowledge on Flash Gordon. I'm not going to claim to be an expert or anything like that. So anyway, look, enough of me talking. Let's get on with the show. So Mr. Jones, the ex-American football player, is listening to a football game on the radio. What a surprise. I presume that's a bit of a little homage to his playing days. What's he doing meeting a dodgy guy in a van? It looks like a drug deal. Or human trafficking, maybe. I don't know. Who's the girl? By the way, if anyone knows how this did commercially, please let me know in the comments because I always was surprised there was never a sequel. And what maybe the reason for that is that this wasn't successful, I don't know. But if you do know, please let me know in the comments. Again, it seems very really like human trafficking to me. They meet in the middle of nowhere in an isolated airfield. A woman gets out of a van, lumped into a plane. I'm sure it's not, but that's what it looks like. Any problem, fellas? Bit of clear air turbulence, nothing serious. <laughs> nothing you'd want to toss a third down pass through either. Okay, so he... So the guy who plays Flash Gordon was an American football player in real life, and Flash Gordon is a fictional American football player star, it looks like. My name's Flash. I know. Look, I'm sorry if I seem rude, I'm just a little scared. You're probably scared after being human trafficked, and I wouldn't blame you, girl. I saw you at the hotel last night. I asked the Major D who you were. Great, and now, now Flash is after admitting he stalked her in order to human traffic her. I couldn't believe a girl like you was alone. You're just saying that to get my mind off this. But she seems obviously flattered by it, so it's all good. The stuff you could get away with in the 70s and 80s. My God, this would never be made today. Well, at least this conversation wouldn't make it into today's movies. What's the matter? That's what's the matter. The skies turn red for some reason. Well, we know the reason. It's Ming the Merciless. Flash. So what? Ming the Merciless is hitting us with a meteor storm? Something like that? Cowabunga. You just say Cowabunga. And I presume that predates The Simpsons, because I always thought that came from The Simpsons. Okay. Maybe it came from here. No, son. No. Check the angular vector of the moon. Exactly what I would have said. If someone said to me, there's no sun, I would say, check the angular vector of the moon. That's the first thing that would have cropped into my head, and I'm sure yours too, if you're watching. His ideas, however, have been rejected by the scientific community as irrational. So this is our stereotypical mad scientist brought into the plot. But is he a good mad scientist or a bad mad scientist? That is the question. What do you find? The moon out of orbit? By more than 12 degrees. He's definitely got the mad scientist eyes going on. I've been right all these years. And like every good mad scientist, he has a load of oscilloscopes going off in the background showing old wave patterns. With flashing lights. This is what we've been waiting for, Monson. We'll go up and counterattack them. <laughs> so... So the mad scientist has been expecting an alien invasion for years and has pre-built a rocket to be able to take on an entire alien galactic empire alone in his single rocket with his buddy Monsoon. I believe it. Monsoon! Why are you running away? He's running away because you got a screw loose, mate. Holy cow! Now, I am no pilot, but when you see the little odometers spinning like that, I'd be concerned. Ah! 
was Ming, the merciless, just in some sort of energy ball that just crashed into the plane. Okay. Oh my God, where are the pilots? My trolley's going. Grab that wheel. Help me pull her up. And just luckily, Flash had been taking flying lessons as he told the human traffic girl that he stalked from the hotel back in the passenger area. So he's able to take over. Now the pilots have just disappeared from Ming the Merciless energy ball. Did your flying lessons get as far as landing? I was afraid you'd ask that. No. So he hasn't taken the landing flying lessons. So he's going to have to what? Learn that on the go? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like he's doing too good. Get shot or go up in that thing? What's the difference? This way you'll be giving your life to save the Earth. Well, it's not about spirit, mate. It's about the fact you're threatening to shoot me unless I go with you in a debt mission. <laughs> As Monsoon said, either option doesn't look particularly appealing. But don't tell me Flash is going to crash land in that exact place. <laughs> what a coincidence. Come on, let's get out of here before she blows. So don't tell me the mad scientist is now going to force Dale and Flash up into the spaceship to take on Ming the Merciless at gunpoint. Just hold me two seconds and then drop me and I'll kiss the ground. Honestly, this human traffic girl is taking it really well. <laughs> I don't know why, but she is. I expect you'd like to use my phone. Thanks, I would. That's it. Trick the mad scientist into the spaceship by telling them there's a payphone in there. Or a landline. The phone is right in there. So this guy just wants anybody who pops up to go along with him. He doesn't need weapons. He doesn't need an army. Well, he has that little six shooter, but that's about it. Are you crazy? Unfortunately not. The attack has begun. He says, unfortunately not, but he's waving a gun at them at complete strangers. So you're not doing a good job, I'd say, of convincing them there, Mr. Mad Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> So we got blast off because Flash accidentally threw the mad scientist head first into the goal button because there's always a big flashing red goal button, in this case green, sorry. And uh, we got blast off. So we're all off to fight Ming the Merciless. For God's sake, strap yourselves down quick! <laughs> he said to strap yourselves down, but the straps don't look too sturdy in my opinion. They look worse than aircraft belts, you know those ones you get in passenger aircraft? They seem pretty pointless to me, to be honest. Friendship. Built this to send in friendship. So is he making that horrible face to simulate G-Force? I presume so. <laughs> and we're off, up in our rather phallic looking rock. What do we do now? Heading into a wormhole? <laughs> Absolutely. And this ship, without ever having experienced space flight or wormholes, is perfectly designed to withstand all of those effects. Great. The object imaged in the Imperial Vortex, now parallel to Starfield Sigma 12. And this guy is wearing the 80s version of Google Glass. Object entering our control range, approaching the Sea of Fire. Bring it through safely. And this planet they're landing on doesn't seem to be particularly hospitable. In fact, it looks quite barren and an unlikely place for an advanced alien species that runs a galactic empire to have formed. Particularly when you're landing in the Sea of Fire. So here are our bad guys, just like ancient Japanese or Mongol warriors. Friends! <laughs> So that guy just had a gun that shoots out hands to choke you and pull you and flip you over? <laughs> okay. And the guy in red is wearing a gas mask for some reason. The others seemingly can breathe just fine. Is this a civic reception? More like a police state. If it is, that could be our good luck. Suspiciously, Ming's Empire Palace looks like a communist era Soviet Union. Lenin tribute. You have the statue that looks like Lenin, you have everything dressed in red, you have the big star, and those could be exaggerations of sickles. Hold, lizard man. Escape is impossible. Surrender. Yes, lizard man. Wherever you came from. <laughs> Prisoner. Lizard man ain't no more. He just got zapped. We didn't even get time to meet lizard man. Don't worry, I'll make it plain. I'm acting on my own. 
It'll be all right. All three are now best friends, despite the fact the mad scientist kidnapped them and they had a fight before they blasted off. Again, okay. <laughs> That was a bit too close to comfort that laser zap there. He got the gun but an inch to the left and he could have got something far more important to that mad scientist. The Hawkmen. I remember the Hawkmen. And Brian blessed with his big booming voice. And we've got Munchkins from the Wizard of Oz in this place as well. Again, Ming the Merciless looking suspiciously like one of the Mongol Khans. I presume he's based on Genghis Khan. Again, if anyone knows, let me know in the comments. And there we have the sexy princess daughter. Ice Jewel of Phrygia. We seized it in battle from the royal crypt. And Timothy Dalton, Mr. James Bond himself. Did they dress him in green because he's Irish? I don't know. Liar! You are a thief! What? So they're both here to pay tribute to Ming, and they obviously don't like each other because they're about to kick off a fight. What's the story there? Are we going to find out? I don't remember. Again, it's 30 years since I've seen this, at least. Or oh, you sacrifice your daughter. That's it. Be quiet, Hulk man, or your little Hulk girl is going to get it. I can offer you nothing this year except my loyalty. We prize nothing more highly. I'm actually genuinely not joking when I say this. I actually think, now that I view it as an adult, this is a piece of anti-Soviet propaganda. But you have all the kind of communist red, you have the Lenin-like statue in the background, you have the autocratic ruler, you have all the countries or planets or whatever they are coming to pay tribute. So I think this is basically saying, look what will happen if the Soviet Union won. And of course, American superhero, the football star, Flash Gordon, is going to ride to the rescue. To all the kingdoms of Mongo, death to me! Has no one copped on to take out that robot thing that's zapping everyone, Lizard Man and now this guy? Don't go after Ming, take out the robot guy and Ming seemingly is defenseless. This Ming's a psycho. This is Ming. He's a psycho. Who said that? <laughs> he is a bit of a psycho, Flash. I agree, man. And again, just like Buck Rogers, the women are dressed in a fashion I fully, fully support. And I wish we had more of it today. Hey, remember me? And I see Flash because... You know, from all the Noxy token concussions he got playing American football, has to have his own name on his t-shirt in case he forgets it. Pathetic earthlings, hurling your bodies out into the void without the slightest inkling of who or what is out here. And actually very wise words. And words we have heard said by many illustrious scientists recently that we should be careful about broadcasting ourselves out there because we actually don't know who's listening. We can speculate, but we don't know. And if there is anyone listening, there's no guarantee that they may be friendly. Dale, don't. I feel really sorry for Dale. First she got stalked by Flash, then she got human trafficked, and she got kidnapped onto a spacecraft. And now she's been mind controlled for God knows what by Ming the Merciless. She is not having a good 48 hours. <laughs> He's turned her into a sex slave with that ring. She seemed to be getting rather hot under the collar, shall we say. What happened to me? I don't know, but it was pretty sensational. And there's Flash being a bit creepy again with that comment. Forget it, Ming. Dale's with me. Flash! I'm sorry, but Sam Jones acting isn't great. The delivery is very monotone. Not his fault, he's a football player, not an actor. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter in this sort of film anyway. <laughs> What's the deal with these joint egg things? 
But it looks like an American football, so he's gonna charge them. Welcome to my party! We're just getting started! A life is a dream or a night! Don't you stop me in the arse, little munching guy. Cause I think I'm going all in! Get me a street cookie catch! Brian, Hulk, man. Bless it. Behave yourself. Handle bars, crashing in my car. Wake up in a bar, I'll be a superstar. Just on my ass. Brilliant, just give Flash an American football he can take out an entire early in court. I'll take six shots, yeah, straight to the face and I'll fuck yeah. Mr. Hawkman's loving putting in the sly jabs there every now and again. I'll take a six shots, I'll straight to the face. I'll take a six shots, are you coming with me? I know this is like an American football version of a scrum that he's counting down. But I don't know what it does. <laughs> this is it. To save the universe, we just have to keep feeding Flash with egg-looking American football things.